me, I'll always say what I feel. In this episode, we take three very different stories. One that looks at the massive issue of migration from Africa to Europe. One that looks at a personal journey of displacement. And one that looks at the tragedy of human trafficking. Welcome to Hotspots, the global current affairs and documentary review show that digs deeper into the big global issues and contentious topics while recommending relevant films. I'm Lucy Rhodes. Today we are looking at the refugee crisis. Let's take a snapshot of the refugee situation. War, poverty, environmental devastation and persecution are driving forces behind record levels of human displacement. In 2011, the top three countries of refugees by origin were Afghanistan with over two and a half million, Iraq with nearly one and a half million, and Syria with one and a quarter million. Other troubled areas are producing record numbers, as you can see from the top ten countries of origin on screen. What many do not realise is that commonly it's less developed countries who are taking the strain of hosting refugees and asylum seekers. The top three destinations receiving the largest numbers by the end of 2011 were Pakistan with over one and a half million, Jordan with a million and Iran hosting over three quarters of a million refugees and asylum seekers. Only a couple of developed countries were in this list of the top ten destination countries. As East meets West, Old World meets New, how do we define cultural identity and belonging? What makes one person a refugee while another is branded a queue jumper? Is it time to redefine our understanding? In this show, we're reviewing three documentaries that reveal the experience of asylum seekers and displaced people. To review these films and discuss their merits and the broader issues, I am joined by David Mann, Executive Director from the Refugee and Immigration Legal Centre in Melbourne, and Charlie Bagnall, Assistant Solicitor from Wilson Solicitors London, who are currently taking a landmark case for the rights of asylum seekers to the Supreme Court in the UK. Our first film is Another Life. It tells the story of Africa's fortune seekers, men prepared to risk death crossing the Sahara to reach the fabled shores of Europe for the dream of a better life. Every year, hundreds of thousands of Africans pour through Niger to Libya, seeking work there or in Europe. Exploited at every step of their journey by police, touts and smugglers, only 40% of them reach Libya. 60% either perish along the way or end up trapped in indentured servitude, trying to buy their way across the remainder of the desert. <laughs> For the tiny minority who do manage to reach Europe, the common fate is detention camps, border police and forced repatriation. Yet they still come, dreaming of a way out of unemployment and crushing poverty. This is a visually beautiful, rich and touching portrait of the sheer spirit and courage of these young migrants. In this epic journey across the desert, there's something inspiring about the way these men push towards a life in which there might be greater opportunities to thrive. What did you think of this film, David? I think it's tremendously important to remember that in, in, in many of the situations that we saw, uh, in another life, and, um, it, and and so commonly in other cases, um, people are forced to flee from their homes. It's not a choice. Does that resonate with your experience, Charlie? I thought that one of the things that was interesting was the um, the the sort of kind of capitalist sort of drive, that sort of self determining attitude of these people that they're willing to take that kind of journey, and. Um, there wasn't so much emphasis on exactly what had gone on in their lives before, but they they had started out on this journey um, and were prepared to take all of these enormous risks just for this hope of a better life. David, you wanted to respond to some of what Charlie was saying. I would tend to agree with Charlie. Uh, there wasn't enough development 
of what lay behind, uh, you know, the, the, the complex situations and the, 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 the drivers, the stories, if you like, that really uh, had resulted in people taking these types of risks. Um, so I think there perhaps was, and I would agree with Charlie on this, perhaps at times uh, too much emphasis uh, on, uh, on, on the economic factors, if you like, without drawing out uh, what lay behind them. So Charlie, what's your experience of the typical reasons and stories and drives behind people um, showing up and seeking asylum or as refugees in Europe? Well, this, I mean, this particular route, this sort of um, sub-Saharan via Libya route is commonly, um, in terms of the asylum seekers, that of Eritreans, Sudanese uh, and Somalians. Um, and, and I mean, the cases that I'm dealing with are predominantly asylum claims. Obviously, Italy, um, which features in Another Life, um, is one of the frontier states which has to deal with the um, asylum seekers as they enter. Um, and, and obviously what that means for Italy is that they have a very, very large burden. So, David, what rating would you give this film out of five? I think the film um, very powerfully um, uh, showed uh, some of the factors uh, and some of the voices uh, of, uh, 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 which are involved in, in people moving and taking dangerous journeys. I think that it was... Um, uh, actually getting inside that journey and seeing what it involves, the risks it takes, um, and uh, and also the courage it takes, and hearing from people, um, seeing hearing the voices of people and seeing their faces, um, and um, and and going through that journey um, with them, I thought was incredibly powerful and a, a very important story to tell. Um, I think another part of it that I thought was was very important was to, in a sense. Um, get inside uh, the motivations of those that facilitate uh, this movement and uh, although it wasn't an in-depth, I wouldn't say an in-depth uh, investigation of that, I thought it was important to hear from some of those uh, you know, that smuggle people and, uh, and why they do it, what, what pressures, what sort of basic human pressures they're under in, uh, in doing that and also uh, indeed their awareness uh, of the dangers they're putting people into. So I thought it was, I was very important on that front. I'd uh, I'd give it a, a, a three and a half or four. Uh, I, I think uh, not being a, a formal movie critic or film critic, I um I'd, I'd put it around there. I'd do three and a half. Charlie, what rating would you give this film? I think my my reasons for sort of not rating it perhaps more highly um, would be to do with uh, a slight lack of analysis, as we've discussed um, about the reasons for people leaving, but. Equally, I think that that was it, it did it did create a strength in the film, which is that it focused very much on individuals in this journey and and the humanization of that process, regardless of what their reasons may have been for leaving, I think is extremely powerful. Um, and I, I just feel that by the time somebody arrives in Europe, um, if they've managed to successfully complete this journey, you can't help but admire, on some level, the courage, determination. Um, of of such a person and I think that that comes across enormously strongly and you know I, I would encourage anyone involved in any sort of assessment of, of asylum claims or, or you know these Dublin type asylum claims to, to watch a film like this before they simply treat somebody as a you know uh, an illegal immigrant um, and I think that you know that that was very strong you know for the same reasons as David I'm I'm shy of being overly critical perhaps but um, I'd probably give it three out of five. Thank you. Our second film is Wadim. It tells a very personal story of a young man and his family's displacement and eventually his tragic suicide. Wadim was born in Latvia, but his parents, who are Russian Latvian, lost their full citizenship rights in the revolution of 1991. They took Wadim, then aged six, and his brother to Germany in the hope of a secure home full citizenship and a brighter future. Their refugee status was rejected and, after years of tenuous and stressful residency under threat of deportation, the worst happened when Wadim turned 18. He was forcibly repatriated to Latvia, 
separated from his family who remained in Germany and dumped with no money in a country in which he had no citizenship, no family, where there is no welfare state and where he didn't speak the language. He was three months shy of finishing his education, so he also lost his chance to gain qualifications or vocational skills. At 23, he took his own life. Sinnloser Tod, das war dem konnte ganz normal leben, glücklich sein. Das alles ist weg. Nur deswegen, weil gewisse Bürokraten einen alten Bescheid nach zehn Jahren vollstrecken wollten. The story of his struggle and his families illustrates the plight of many Latvian immigrants to Germany whose temporary visas were suddenly revoked after years of making Germany their home. 87,000 people were awaiting deportation from Germany at the time this film was made. Exploring the meaning of home and the consequences when home is taken away, this film shows a heart-wrenching personal story that illustrates a much larger issue. Einer von der letzte Telefonat hat zu mir gesagt, Mama, stell dir mal vor, es wäre doch so schön, wir alle vier zusammen leben in Hamburg. Ich habe gesagt, Junge, wie stellst du dir das vor? Mama, ich träume nur. Das wäre doch schön. Ich habe gesagt, Junge, ich wünsche mir das Sehnsuchtig, nichts anderes als das. David, what did you think of this film? I thought it was an absolutely tragic story and one that I've seen before in, in, in other situations. Uh, I mean, it highlighted for me, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the terrible um, uh, limbo of statelessness, um, the terrifying limbo, in, in fact, of uh, not having a home, uh, of losing one's identity, um, starting to rebuild one's life um, uh, and in this case with a family rebuilding their lives but being left at the same time in this terrible limbo in a sort of uh, endless cycle of uncertainty uh, which uh, as, we, as we know from this um, uh, very powerful documentary uh, ended in such tragedy but also um, the, the, the the re-traumatisation uh, that temporary status uh, can cause. Um, so having fled, it, it sort of creates in a sense, and I've seen this in many cases um, in Australia and elsewhere, the, the temporary protection uh, and not, not giving anyone any sense of a, of a, of a durable future, of a, of, of a durable solution, as the UN Refugee Agency calls it, uh, can, can re-traumatise people, can create a second wave of suffering. And uh, that came through uh, very poignantly and um, and very very sadly. Charlie, how do you feel about this film? I, I actually rather saw the film more as a a consideration of of private life and and, and of family life than than so much a discussion about statelessness. I, I felt that there wasn't quite enough um, uh, explanation as to exactly what statelessness is and and the two tier approach to. Um, citizenship in Latvia post-revolution and I thought that um, the, the fact that there was some basis for Wadim having a life again in Latvia, albeit one that was completely dislocated and um, uh, unsettled, uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't sort of clear to me and, and that didn't come across but I, I was equally moved. I, I think it's a beautifully told story and a, an incredibly sad one. David, what's your experience of um, these kind of issues in Australia and in the kinds of cases you've dealt with? Well, I, I, the experience is that uh, there is a very serious issue to do with uh, both statelessness and also uh, with uh, yeah, the, the principle of family unity, the human right to, to family unity. Uh, this this uh, form of temporiness uh, has been very uh, a very serious that problem in people rebuilding their lives, re-establishing their lives. Uh, it's left them, in, in a sense, in a, a Kafkaesque twilight world. And as part of that also, uh, there is a very serious issue to do with statelessness. How would you rate this film? 
I'd give it a four, and I'd give it a four because, um, again, not being a film critic, but um, but uh, someone who um, uh, w was deeply moved uh, by um, the human story, and I think it, it brought that out in an incredibly poignant way. Uh, it got inside the, the tragic human consequences of a failure, um, I think, uh, to uh, respond uh, to people's basic human rights. And, uh, and on that score, I, I think it was, it's tremendously powerful uh, in telling the human consequences of, of that type of failure, of both uh, the failure of, um, of states uh, to respond and a failure in that context of, uh, of, um, of people being afforded their basic human rights. Thank you. Charlie, how about you? How would you rate this film? I think I'm in agreement with, with David. I, um, I think probably a four. Um, my obsession is, is probably with getting across I'm trying to get across an understanding of um, exactly how it has come to pass that people are in these situations. And, you know, I didn't necessarily feel that that was all explained, but what, what is so crystal clear is, is the, um, the devastation caused by the decisions. I think that it's something which um, can speak um, to, to many people. So on, on that level, I think that it had, um, I had a lot of power. So I thought it, you know, I mean, I very much enjoyed watching it, as sad as it was. Thank you, Charlie. Our third film is Desert Riders. It looks at the story of young boys who have been trafficked from Bangladesh, Pakistan, Mauritania and other countries to work as camel jockeys in the United Arab Emirates under excruciating conditions. An in-depth expose of shocking child slavery and abuse set against a backdrop of sweeping desert vistas and shining cities this film shows how the opulent wealth of the Middle East seduces families in poorer countries into believing that their boys are being sent to a better life when nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> The boys' personal stories of neglect, starvation, physical and sexual abuse are shocking. Just the idea of three-year-old children being put on top of wildly galloping camels and the accidents involved in this sport is horrifying. But the treatment of these children when they are not racing is barbaric. It's a story with a happy ending, kind of. As due to media attention, the United Arab Emirates banned child jockeys in 2005. This film follows up what happened as the children were reunited with their families and how the rather meagre compensation money that was awarded to them actually ended up being used by those families. Riveting, disturbing and brilliantly made, this film will stay with me for a long time. <laughs> How, how did you find this one, Charlie? This this film actually sort of had some some positivity to it. It was probably the hardest to watch um, of the three films because the issues were so so grim but um it was also um full of um positivity in the sense that there were um ways in which the situation had been challenged and an an improvement ha had been made for the situation of a number of the individual children but also some of the mechanisms to protect them and then the change of the law um in the uae as well so on that level actually um it, it was um it was it was more satisfactory somehow to watch in terms of a, an overall narrative because it it completed from the, the start of the journey to some sort of sense of success and an outcome. I I enjoyed it for that reason. Um, I think that the the elements um, in this film which which made it stand out from the others were that this was rather than a situation of um, self motivated migration this was the the plucking of people from one place to another um, 
and 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 it was distinct in that way in addressing a different kind of issue of of migration. David, how did you find this film? I felt again deeply moved by it, but also deeply, deeply troubled by it. Uh, even though um, I, I've acted myself uh, for um, uh, people who've been trafficked, the the barbaric nature of uh, of what was happening uh, to these children, uh, you know, shocked me. I, I must say, I would very much agree with Charlie that um, it told a story. Um, it, it gave us a narrative which I think not only is very important in in terms of showing and revealing um, the uh, barbaric nature of, uh, of of this type of human rights abuse which goes on around the world. That at the same time, I think it also showed um, so something quite different, and that is our common humanity um, uh, and the ability also um, of the law uh, to have a transformative effect. Uh, so I thought it was um, incredibly important. Thank you, David. Charlie, how about you? What's your uh, exp What was your response to this story? Well, I mean, I, I think I second everything that David has said. Um, I, I think I'd, I'd go so far as to even give it a five. Um, I thought it was a fantastic film, and I thought that as much as it got across the issues, it, it got across a lot about the law and the power of the law to change. It was strong for me both because it, it helped draw attention again to things which we might otherwise take for granted, but also the strength of the individuals that's required to create those kind of systems. So, I, yeah, I thought it was great. I, I'd give it five. So, David, how would you rate this film? I'd give this film a four and a half, and uh, I'd give that it, it um, such a high uh, rating because uh, not only did it, it, it get right inside um, the barbaric nature of uh, the trafficking and the effect on, on the children and brought out their voices, it showed... Um, uh, you know, the, the, cru the, the cruel consequences, uh, the face of it. I think it also was, uh, as has been mentioned, a, um, a story also of triumph and of human dignity and how the law uh, can actually uh, play a really serious role in, uh, you know, in, in restoring human dignity, uh, protecting it and, and allowing it to flourish. So thank you very much, Charlie and David, for joining us tonight. I think that your input and your opinion of these films has been extremely um, informed and considered. And we thank you very much for taking part. Pleasure. 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 Thank Thanks. Okay. You. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. And now on screen is a summary of how our panellists and I rated these documentaries. These are some of the more revealing films we currently have on refugees and human displacement in our catalogue and we look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Lucy Rhodes, and this is Hotspots, the global current affairs and documentary review show. Mm -hmm.